Welcome back to Movies Recapped. Today I will show you an American fantasy, from 2012, titled The Brass Teapot. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and enjoy. Alice and John are still in bed when the morning alarm goes off, the two linger in bed to the point where John has to rush off by bicycle to his low-paying soul-killing telemarketing job. Alice slips into some half-sexy, half-professional interview clothes, the outfit appears to be culled from whatever she's got in the closet, and sets out to find a job. She needs to pay off the thousands of dollars of debt she's racked up getting an art history degree, a good luck with that enterprise if ever there was. John calls one of the potential client and tries to sell them a home computer warranty but he fails to convince him. His boss who is passing by noticed that the sale was a failure and he confronts him reminding him of their three sales pivot points for optimal success. Alice fails to impress in the job interview as there were more qualified applicants than her. At home, a frustrated Alice tries to look for more jobs in the newspaper to apply. Meanwhile, Arnie their landlord has come to collect the rent, well before the due date. Alice writes him a check and the couple are left with nothing but an overdraft of $45. We learn that in high school, gorgeous Alice was voted most likely to succeed but now she's just trying to make ends meet. Her degree in art history has resulted in unemployment. They are invited to a party to celebrate their former high schoolmate Peyton new job. Ironically almost everyone in their school seems to be doing much better than them to a point where they are embarrassed about how they are dressed. We are introduced to another couple, Charles and Louise, who despite being in love are also struggling to make ends meet. Charles joins John at the bar, where he was consoling himself for not fitting in with the rest of the people. They drink and party all night only to regret the next morning after vomiting severally. While going out shopping John inquires about Alice's previous interview, he advises her that she can always start small by applying to low-end jobs as it will open the road for better opportunities. Clearly, Alice is not the type to start small, as she has always applied to jobs she is underqualified. During the drive, they are involved in a minor car accident in front of an antique store. Alice notices an elderly woman pick a teapot and enter the rundown antique store, she quickly follows her in and meets an old Jewish woman, she is mysteriously drawn towards the brass teapot, which she promptly shoplifts, much to her husband's consternation. The next day, while John is at work, Alice burns herself with a curling iron, and money comes out of the teapot. She hurts herself some more and more money spouts from the pot. After being fired for not smiling while receiving clients calls, John heads home and finds his wife Alice in a bed full of bruises. Concerned about her wife he inquires what happened and she tells him of her discovery. She slaps him and John is shocked to see the teapot magically spouts wads of cash. They eventually learn that the more painful the injury they give themselves, the more money shoots out of the teapot. But John becomes increasingly unsettled by their supernatural benefactor, claiming that it would end badly. The next morning, Alice wakes up to find that John went back to the antique to return the teapot. However, he finds it closed and opts to go to the antiques roadshow where he is given an estimate of the priceless teapot's value to be around $5,000 on live television. Meanwhile, a mysterious Chinese man, Dr. Ling, while watching the roadshow and to his surprise, he sees the teapot he has been searching for for years. Soon after, Alice and John are earning stacks of cash simply by subjecting themselves to an endless array of punishments including Brazilian waxes, burning, and bruising, dentistry sans anesthesia, tattoos, and even rough sex, promising to stop before it gets out of hand. While having dinner with the rest of the family, Alice's mother is concerned that they are getting on really well for someone who works as a telemarketer. John and Alice pose that they are investors and he no longer does telemarketing. Back at home, the couple is looking forward to making a million before Christmas after which they will get rid of the teapot. But the teapot has drawn the attention of a ruthless pair of Hasidic Jews desperate to retrieve it, the grandsons of the woman who ran the antique shop. They show up on their door and rough up John asking for the teapot, but Alice hides it and instead offers the money claiming they already sold the teapot for $5,000. John and Alice visit the library to research more about the teapot, and they discover that it has a long and sordid history and that those who possess it will suffer unsavory consequences. Alice also learns that possessing the teapot could lead to death, but she withholds that information from John by ripping out a page from the book. Because of their newfound wealth, 
John and Alice can pay off their outstanding debts, they buy a new car, a house, next to Alice's former childhood friend Peyton, who is married into money, and all the luxuries they've always wanted. They even hold a party in their new house for housewarming. The couple gets a visit by Dr. Ling informs them that they should give up on the teapot, otherwise, they will be destroyed by the evil power. But greedy Alice does not want to stop and reaches the next level of meanness. Apparently, it's not just Dr. Ling and the Jews brothers attracted to the teapot. Arnie their former landlord is quite surprised as to how the two losers have got so much money in such a short time. During his visit, he grabs the teapot and runs away with it to his car. After much pleading from Alex not to destroy it, he throws it on the road and runs over it with his truck, the teapot magically repairs itself from the damage. Concerned about the event, Alice and John pay a visit to Dr. Ling to learn more about it as it wasn't damaged by the accident. Dr. Ling informs them that it has been in existence for over 2000 years in possession of different people including kings and that it cannot be destroyed but rather hidden where no one can get to it. He informs them that the teapot will bring out the evil in them if it exists. John is moved and ready to give it up but Alice is not yet ready to let the teapot go. Things seem to get out of hand as Alice breaks her legs while skiing just to make the teapot spout cash. At the mall, Alice and Peyton meet with Louise, Alice's former best friend working at Mr. Smoothie. Alice clearly is saddened by Louise's situation. Later that night, the two Jews brothers break into their house and make away with all their money. They inform Alice and John that they knew they still had the teapot but they don't want it as it is a monster. They even advise them not to wait too long and get rid of it before it gets out of hand. It is at this moment we learn that the elderly Jewish woman placed the stop sign near her antique store just to cause accidents and in turn get money from the teapot. But as a fight erupts, one of the brothers is magically drawn to the teapot and he touches it, a bad mistake. As time goes on, the teapot pays out less and less, so John and Alice have to come up with more ingenious ways to hurt themselves or others. This includes starting fights with random strangers at the club. Once again Dr. Ling pays John a visit, informing him that the teapot is consuming him and that it is getting out of hand. Alice later learns that the pot will also pay out more for injuries that happen to other people who are near the pot. To make more money, they attend underground wrestling, visit a tattoo artist, and even go to the maternity ward at the hospital. John sees the teapot as a threat to their established way of life, albeit humble. It is through an argument about the very usefulness of the teapot that the two ironically discover a previously unknown aspect. When John tells Alice that she wouldn't be a good mother and she calls him a loser, bigger bills appear in the pot. Emotional pain pays more, and the stress of their situation causes them to begin telling all. Confessions that would end most marriages on the spot are only precursors to rattling disclosures that all but fill the teapot. The brass teapot quickly takes over their lives. They become reliant on the spoils of pinpricks and insults until they find themselves growing tolerant to the various pains. The couple decides to start hurting other people by revealing their dark secrets. They expose Peyton for killing his husband's dog, and John tells on his boss's affair with Josh the intern. Soon, Alice is unable to have normal relationships with people unaffected by the pot, she sees them as undamaged goods, as money not yet harvested. It is Alice, in the end, who begins to wonder just how much money a human life would be worth. When Alice starts considering murder, John realizes that they are going too far and he wants to get rid of the teapot. Alice doesn't want to go back to their old life and won't give it up. One night, John finds the info that Alice withheld concerning the teapot and death. He then gives her an ultimatum, give up the pot or he'll leave her. When she hesitates to answer, John knows she will choose the pot and attempt suicide by jumping out their second floor window. He survives and Alice finally realizing that the teapot is damaging their marriage and nearly killed John, agrees to get rid of it. They plan on handing the teapot over to Dr. Ling the next morning, but late that night Arnie breaks into their house and steals the pot. At first, they are glad it's gone, but then they realize that if two nice people like them can turn evil due to the teapot, what can it do to a mean person like Arnie? They go to Arnie's trailer and attempt to take back the pot, but are met by Arnie, his wife Brandy, and a pair of guns. Just as Arnie and Brandy are about to kill John and Alice, the two Jewish men arrive with guns to take the teapot for themselves. The four begin shooting it out while John and Alice hide. 
ultimately, the four all kill each other while the teapot spits out thousands of dollars. John and Alice come out of hiding, gather up all the money and the teapot, and leave the trailer. Later, they meet with Dr. Ling and they give him the teapot. John and Alice decide they have enough money, and they give their friends Louise and Charles $250,000, and get rid of their new house and car. The movie ends with Dr. Ling sailing to the middle of the ocean and dropping the teapot overboard, where it sinks to the bottom. At the end Alice is pregnant and are on a road trip to Mexico with John. Please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notifications about new movie recaps.